So as some of you probably know by now, JEPQ or JEPQ is one of my favorite covered call ETFs to invest in because for an investor like myself, it's kind of the best of both worlds. You get similar returns of the NASDAQ while receiving monthly dividend paychecks along the way that you can reinvest right back into your portfolio. And kind of the cherry on top for JEPQ is that the dividend yield has stayed in the double digits for almost a year now. It's hovered around 11 to 12 percent. So you can count on those monthly dividend paychecks being pretty high, especially comparing it to other dividend ETFs. It's paid out 12 consecutive dividends so far at an average of 45 cents per share. So needless to say, JEPQ is definitely one that I'll be continuing to invest in and build up over time to the point where I'm receiving over $1,000 a month just from its dividend payments. Which I know is kind of a lofty goal, but definitely something that's doable. And towards the end of the video, we'll take a look at how my JEPQ position has been doing so far, as well as the amount I've been making each month in dividends. But there's another ETF that I think would be the perfect partner for JEPQ, especially if you want a more growth-related portfolio that pays consistent dividends. So this ETF is QQQM, not to be confused with the classic QQQ. Now you might be wondering what the difference is between the two, and there's honestly not much of a difference other than QQQM has a slightly lower expense ratio at 0.15% as opposed to 0.2% for the QQQ. So it's not much, but over time, you'll definitely be saving a lot in fees by choosing QQQM, which is also why it's a lot more attractive to long-term investors. It also has a slightly higher dividend yield, currently at 0.64% compared to 0.57% for the triple Q, which actually makes its total return just marginally higher. So we now know that it's extremely similar to the QQQ, but has those few fairly small factors that make it just a little bit better of an investment. We also know that it's going to be very tech heavy since it tracks the NASDAQ 100. So with that being said, let's take a look at what's inside the portfolio. So as you can see, the top 10 holdings consist of the Magnificent 7, and they make up just about 50% of the portfolio with Apple being the largest holding there at the top at just under 11% with the other six stocks all being under about 10% of the portfolio when it comes to weight. And with it being a NASDAQ 100 ETF, it's going to be a little more volatile than an S&P 500 ETF like VOO or SPY, but the long-term growth is definitely there for QQQM. When it comes to its growth, so far this year, it's up over 40% year to date, including dividends, outperforming the SPY by over 20 percentage points. And if we look at the one-year return for both JEPQ and QQQM, we can see that they both beat out the S&P 500 by more than just a few percentage points. So this is why I think pairing these two ETFs together creates a simple two-fund portfolio that's just a growth and dividend machine. Something you do have to remember when investing in funds like this, though, is the fairly high volatility that they come with. It's been almost two years since QQQM hit its all-time high back in November 2021, and it might be a couple more months until it reaches those highs again. It also dropped about 34% off its all-time high back in 2022, but since its inception back in 2020, it's still up about 40%. But honestly, if you're focused on the long-term horizon, that short-term volatility shouldn't really matter, especially if you're consistently adding capital each month. And even though JEPQ might be more volatile than other comparable ETFs like JEPI, it's actually designed to be less volatile than the NASDAQ while keeping those consistent monthly distributions. All right, so as I promised, I'm gonna pull up my position in JEPQ and show you guys how much I've been making each month in dividends. So I just recently purchased three more shares, which puts my total amount invested at $1,500 or 32 shares and I've been holding this position and growing it for about seven months now. It pays out its dividend at the beginning of each month, so just about a week ago, I got paid $13.07, or 45 cents per share. And I plan on reinvesting each of these payments back into the fund so I can eventually buy one new share each month just from its dividend payments and kind of create that dividend snowball. And like I mentioned earlier, the ultimate goal of this position is getting $1,000 a month in dividends, but that of course might take a couple more years. Anyway guys, let me know in the comments below what you think of these two ETFs that I mentioned today and whether or not you'd consider adding them to your portfolio for that high growth and monthly dividends. And as always guys, feel free to check out my channel if you enjoy content like this and I'll see you next time.